Hi creative friends, my name is Ashley the Thrifty Chica. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Thanks so much for joining me here today. And if you're back again, thanks so much for being here. I always love seeing your comments and talking to you guys. Today we're gonna to be talking about some new updates to Cricut Design Space. You'll see these roll out within the next few weeks and I wanted to give you more of an in-depth look at them. So if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content and let's get talking about some of the new changes that are coming up. So my first question to you guys is, which device do you use to use Cricut Design Space? Are you using a mobile phone, a tablet, or a desktop computer? Leave a comment below and let me know. I would love to know. And that way I can always make sure that I have my tutorials created just for you guys. Today we're going to be talking about the changes specifically for the desktop version of Cricut Design Space. And this change affects you if you are using a Windows 10 computer or a Mac OS 10.15 or above. That's who's going to be able to use these new features inside Cricut Design Space. This is something that has been highly requested. I mean, for years I've heard people be so excited about the concept of using offset. So we're going to be talking about using offset, inset, and a new collections feature inside Design Space, as well as some changes that are coming to the Access membership for uploads and for non-Access members as well. So let's go ahead and talk some more about Offset specifically. What is Offset and how do you use it? Offset is a way that you can create specialty borders for text, for shapes, or combinations of both using this specific tool. Let's get started. So I went ahead and created a brand new um, canvas inside Cricut Design Space, and I brought in a couple of different images that I thought would be fun to work with. So the first one is this word spring. If you are using Design Space and you wanna test out offset, you can use it on things like shapes, you can use it on text, and you can use it on groups of objects. So it can be a single item or multiple items working together. That's something I think is really cool about this one. So let's go ahead and play around with the offset feature. The first thing that you're gonna do is select whichever um, item you want to create a border around. That's how essentially you use offset. We're gonna go up to the top here where it says offset and we'll click on it. You'll notice that it has a little beta tag. The reason for this is Cricut is going to be using your feedback as you're using it um, to help inform them for later changes and updates. So that way they get this fine tuned to exactly the way that we use it specifically. So. It's going to go ahead and give you a selection for distance. There are two options that are kind of rolled into one for this one. So the first one is this bar here and you can see as you adjust it, you'll notice that it creates an outline of um, varying sizes depending upon um, the size that you input here. So you can enter a value between zero all the way up to one inch. So if you wanted a one inch border around your project, you can totally do that or you can make it smaller. If you're a quilter, you're gonna know that this is super handy, especially if you're creating um, quilting designs, you can put in a seam allowance automatically to it. So I thought that was really neat. Um, and you, there's some other options here. I'm gonna talk about them as we go, but the first one is that you can choose the corners. So you can choose a corner that is rounded or a corner that's angular. Because this is a rounded design, I'm gonna go ahead and choose the rounded one. And we're gonna go ahead and click apply. As you can see, it pops up with an outline for this, and this outline is actually um, a solid layer that you can use behind it, and it's completely separate. So um, once you've created it, you can group it together so that you have them um, as part of a group, or you can just leave it how it is automatically. I'm gonna go backwards here, and then they're separate layers. So it would cut this one in black, and it would cut this one in this kind of really pretty mint green. And as you can see, it's really neat if you wanna create something like a 3D effect, so cool for that, or you can just leave it where you have a little outline around it. Um, and if you wanted to continue with it, you can create another one. So you can highlight this, go up to the top here where it says offset, and then create a little bit larger one. And then you can click apply. Let me go down a little bit more. There we go. Click apply. And then you have another one. So you can create as many layers as you want around it to make a really neat 3D effect. This is also perfect for things like cake toppers and stickers. If you want to adjust the way that each um, color looks, you can just click on the layer here 
and go up to the top and select whichever color you like for it. So you can really play around and adjust the different colorings for it and that way it makes it really custom looking. And again, all of these pieces will be individual so that way you can um, create your own sections and your own layers. This is really handy, especially if you wanna make your own um, style of SVG to cut. So I'm really excited about this. This is just one way of creating with that. And I'm gonna show you another project using the Angular text for it. So let's create some text. I'm just gonna click on here and um, write a word. Let's go ahead and choose a text that would look really neat with it. Okay, so we have our text here. I went ahead and selected the font Futura, which I think has a really nice angular design to it. I'm gonna change the color on this to a red, just to give you an idea of how cool this is going to look. We'll select this and go up to the top where it says offset, and you can play around with how this one looks. So I want this to be, um, we'll go with 0 0.3 right in there, around there. I think that's gonna look nice. It depends on which corner you select um, for each design, but on this one, because it is kind of an angular design, this is really just gonna look best with angles. So I'm selecting the angles, and then I'm gonna click apply. You can also choose to weld the offsets or not. This mostly applies when you're using multiple objects. I'll show you a little bit later. I'm gonna click apply, and then you can see how it creates this really cool background. If you don't want this section here to be um, have the little background on it where it has the little pop through, what you can do is you can highlight that layer, you can go and use the contour tool, and then just select the piece that you want filled in, click exit, and then it becomes a singular solid piece. So that's an easy way to change it in case you have some sections pop up that you want to fill in. And as you can see, that looks really cool. I love how that looks now. For the next example, I'm going to take this and I'm going to create an image using two different items. We'll go ahead and delete these because we don't need them. So what if you wanted to create a project that had multiple pieces put together and you wanted to create a background for it? I'm going to take this one and I'm going to rotate it and we can play around with it. It would look cool here or maybe we'll place it here. and. I think that's really fun. So what if we wanted to create something as a background around it? We can draw a box around both, which selects both of these, or you can select both using the tools on the side here. You'll go up to the top where it says offset, and then you can go ahead and play with um, how this is arranged. So for this, I don't want an angular style because this is kind of a rounder design. So I'm gonna choose the rounded section, and you can play around with the sizing on this one. I think I'm gonna keep that at the 0.25. And now is where we're gonna talk about welding offsets. So if you're gonna weld an offset, it means that they're both connected um, in one singular piece. If you wanted these to be separate, you would click off of this and it will make the border for each one. So there'll be a border around this one and a border around this one as well. But because these are kind of overlapping, it's gonna look the best if you have them as a singular piece. So I'm choosing to weld the offsets. This is a feature that's automatically um, checked marked on there. So just make sure that you select which one you're going to use and then we'll click apply. And as you can see, it makes a really cool piece um, that you can do there. So if you wanted to create this as a grouping, you'll just make sure to select everything and you can click group and then they all become a singular group. Or you can undo that and then you can have them as um, individual sections. Just remember that after you've created it, you'll want to make adjustments whether you want it grouped or not grouped, however you want to use it. Um, so that's just kind of a neat way to do this. And you can also create more layers than this. So there's a lot of ways that you can really play around and adjust it. So what if we wanted to create another layer over the outside again? And we click apply. And then you can really, you know, adjust it and change the colors. Like maybe you want this color to be a nice bright color behind it. So. As you can see, so many different ways to play around with it. Let's go ahead and play around with some shapes as well. For the inset feature, I'm gonna show you using some different shapes and we're gonna select this circle. 
go up to the top where it says offset and as you can see this section is for the offset if we move the bar this direction it creates an inset so the neat thing about this is it's a great way to create outlines inside a project and you can really adjust it depending on how you want it to look so as you remember um, you'll choose whichever corner based on the shape or um, the style of the item that you're working on we'll go ahead and click apply and then you can see how this would look as a smaller piece that would work there. You can also make this as a, um, a draw feature. So if you wanted to create something um, as a design inside and you wanted a nice border around the inside of it, it's an easy way to do it. We can also click on this shape and go ahead and click offset and do the same thing. And then this way, we can create an angular one and you get different looks. You could create one that's a rounded one and you'll get more of a rounded look, or you can create one with an angular look as well. We're gonna go ahead and click apply. And then what if we wanted to do another one? We can click on that and then click offset and make one even slightly smaller than that. So it's a great way to create a series of shapes um, to play around with. So we can select one and change the color and then we can see exactly as we're working. So if you wanna create a layered image, this is such a great way to create something that's layered and has a very complex look. And that's something that um, I'm super excited about to show you guys inside Design Space. Let's go ahead and talk about some questions that you may have about using the offset and inset features. One of the questions you might find popping up is when I've made a layer in offset, can I adjust the sizing of that layer? So let's take this purple layer, for example, if you've already created it, it doesn't allow you to change the sizing of that layer aside from, you know, the standard adjustment of the whole um, section that way. So if you want to create a different sizing for your, your whole decal, you can do that by dragging on the corners, but you can't adjust the um, actual size of that outline. So if you want to change that up, what you can do is select that layer and you can always delete that layer and then go back to the section that you are happy with go to the offset tool and then you can adjust this to the sizing that you actually want to see. So I'm going to select a rounded edge and maybe I wanted that a little bit larger than the other one. So we'll click apply because once you've clicked apply, then it becomes a permanent layer and it's not no longer able to be adjusted. So we can change this, um, we'll say to a different color there. And that's one way that you can really um, play around with it. So it is very easy to customize and to play around with. Um, if you prefer one size versus the other, then just go ahead and make a new layer. Very easy to do that way. You might also be wondering, can you apply offset to multiple different images? And you totally can. You can use it with text, as we see here. You can use it with shapes, and you can also use it with words in combination with shapes. So there are a lot of different options to customize this exactly how you would like. Does offset work on all images? Something to keep in mind is when you're selecting an image, let's go ahead and click on the images and take a look. If you're doing something like a heart, for example, you can take a look at something like one of these and um, if you bring this in, this is what is called a closed path image. So you can see that there's an outline around it and there's clear lines of where it starts and stops. If you go into images and you're selecting an image that is a drawn image, so we can select operation type draw only, you'll notice that there are a lot of images that have more open details on these ones. So this cat is a great example of this. I'm going to go ahead and click insert images. And if you take a look at the cat, you can see that the, the lines of how it's made are a little bit more fuzzy. There's a little bit more um, details and sometimes there's open-ended sections that might be a little bit harder to work with. So um, offset and inset is not ideal for items that are drawn images specifically. Um, it might work for some drawn images, but it might not work for others. So if we take a look at this one and say we were creating something around here and clicked apply you can see that it didn't select um, the hole for the cat it's just selecting the pieces that it recognizes as a um, closed path so in this case a drawn image like this one is just not as ideal for working with that however something like this you can take as an offset and click apply and it easily works with and creates with so that's just something to keep in mind for how it's used and remember, if you're working with offset and you want to close up a section, you can always use the contour tool and it helps you to fill in the gaps on that. If you're wondering how large of an offset can you make, remember you can go up to an inch. Mm -hmm. 
Now let's talk about the next feature inside Cricut Design Space that's going to be added, which is the collections feature. And I'm really excited about this. So how do you use the collections feature? The collections feature is the way that you can arrange the different items inside your projects. And there are two different ways to do it. I'm going to show you the first one. Say you're creating a project and you're done with it and you're ready to save. You can click on save. It will bring up this new window here that says save project so you can create a title. So well, let's go ahead and create a title for this one. And then we're going to say save to collection. So it says no collections exist yet. So you can create a new collection and we can create a collection based on however we'd like. So we created one and now we can save it to that collection. Let's go ahead and click save and now it was saved. Another way that we can create a collection is go into our projects. So now that we're on our project page, this will show us all of our latest projects that we've been working on. It also shows us the collection that we just created, which is neat. You can update the name for the collection just by clicking on the little icon there and you can rename it to whatever you'd like. Um, so there's the, the option to rename it. If you don't like this collection, you can always go ahead and delete it as well. What if you want to organize some of the rest of your pieces here? You can click on the top here where it says organize. So let's click on that. And I want to sort all of my latest mug projects. So I'm going to click on all of the projects that have the mugs on them that I've been working on. And we're going to add them together into one. So on the bottom here, you can see that it says six out of 100 selected. I'm going to click next. It's going to say, hey, do you want to use one of these available collections? I'm going to say, no, I think I'm going to create a new collection. So let's make a new name. And I'm just going to call it Mug Designs and click Create. Now it's selected for Mug Designs and we can click Done. And it will show us a brand new collection on this side. We can click on that collection and it will show us all of those projects that we've tagged as Mug Designs. And the neat thing about this is you can create this for multiple different ones. So say you have projects that fit into multiple different types of categories, you can create different categories and they can be inside different ones as well. So um, if you wanted to arrange them by things with heart designs, you could put this mandala mug inside mandala, hearts, or inside just mugs. So you can really organize it to whatever works best for your organizational needs. Let's talk about some different questions you might have. And the first might be, how many collections can I create? So if you are not a Cricut Access member, you can make five different collections. And if you are a Cricut Access member, you're unlimited with the amount that you can create. Will I lose my collections if I'm no longer an Access member? You'll have access to the five largest collections that you have, and Cricut will save the list in case you ever decide to resubscribe to Cricut Access. How many different projects fit inside a collection? So each one of these little categories here will fit up to a thousand designs inside of it. So you can create multiple different categories and you can fit up to a thousand different designs. If you're wondering, can you change the order that this is in? These are all listed alphabetically, so just make sure that you have them listed how you would like alphabetically. Um, you can also you know, just change up the, the uh, order um, by how you name it, so just keep that in mind. If you have specific things you use the most, maybe name it with something that's uh, first in the alphabetical list. Are collections available offline? They are not, they are online only, so just make sure that if you wanna update your collections that you're online. Let's talk about some more information that Cricut released in their latest email. So they talked to us about offset and inset, as well as the new collections feature. They did mention the new kerning feature that will be coming up, and kerning is when you change up the letter spacing for fonts. So that is also something that's been really hugely requested, so I'm really excited to see that. There are also some new changes coming to Cricut Design Space based on your Access membership subscription. So if you're currently a Cricut Access member, you'll notice that you have unlimited uploads and you'll also have unlimited collections. So you can create as many organizations as you'd like or upload as many SVG images as you'd like. If you are not a Cricut Access member, you'll be limited to five collections that you can create inside the organizational window, and you'll be also limited to 20 um, SVG or picture pattern type of um, uploads per month. So those do not roll over, so make sure to use up the full 20 every month. And if you guys want to subscribe to Cricut Access, I do have information and links below. I do really think it's worth it. You get access to a library of over 100,000 images, over 500 fonts, as well as um, 
some discounts on the store. You get 10% off of physical items and you also get some really cool access to mystery boxes as well. So if you guys want more information on that, that's in the description box below. And I hope you're having a wonderful day. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave them below and I'm always happy to help out. I can always make another video and share more information with you guys. So I'll talk to you later.